continuing into my adventure into crochet and I've decided to try to conquer the granny square. So this was my first attempt. By the way, I hate this yarn, but I have a bunch of it. So I figured I could practice with this until I move on to actual squares I want to then stitch together maybe into a blanket. So you can see the first one is a little bit uh, wobbly. Okay, first attempt. And then here's my second attempt. I watched a combination of granny square tutorials I found on YouTube and I end up coming back to these a few channels. I'll link them in the description below if you're curious. Constantly learning things I didn't know about crochet, that there's like different ways to do a granny square. Some people like a more loose type of granny square, not so loose. So this second attempt is on the more loose style. And then to my third, uh, which I'm still working on, I'm trying to learn and figure out how to uh, change the colors. And also weave in the loose ends as I go, which is, I'm learning a little bit more difficult, but I'm getting there and I'm learning. I thought maybe this could be something I could watch TV and do, but it's not quite there yet. Maybe I could listen to like a podcast or listen to something while I do it. I'm not to the point where I could take my eyes off of this, but it is, somewhat relaxing and that's why I wanted to try to do this. And the hook that I'm using is the one that I got from the Woobles kit, which I did a video on recently. You can go check that out if you want to. It's actually a pretty good hook. It's a really ergonomic handle and it feels nice. And I'm also still learning how I like to hold the yarn in my other hand. I've watched many videos on it that it's really up to your preference. Some people just hold it or they twist it around their finger. There's different methods. So I kept working on this while I was watching TV and I meant to stop and then I thought, well, let me just see what one more looks like and then one more and now it's becoming a really big granny square. So maybe I'll just turn it into like a small blankie and use the rest of this yarn. Maybe I'll see how big it gets. And I use all of it? I don't know. I think it's been really good practice though because I'm seeing my my stitching or crocheting a lot more uniform as I keep going. And at least when I get a yarn that I do like, it's going to be more uniform in crochet. To be honest, I'm a little overwhelmed at what type or brands of yarn to try or kits. So if you guys have any recommendations, I'm open to reading them in the comments. I heard of Yarnspirations from a patron of mine. So I wanna check out what kind of afghans or blanket patterns they have. And I still want to keep in the beginner friendly zone. This one looks fun, dried flowers. I like the mix of texture in the yarn or texture of colors in the yarn. Unfortunately, it's out of stock, but I do like that most of these sites, when you search for kits, have like the hook you need and the quantities of yarn. Let's see, I'm gonna search Granny Square, see what they have here. I'm going to narrow it down over here to crochet and project type. Not sure I'm ready for apparel. Maybe stick to some afghans or blankets. Uh, but I have been wanting to try a cardigan or a, a coat. Here is a traditional granny throw. This granny square looks a lot larger than the one I'm working on. I'm sure it calls for more yarn. I do like this one, but it's, it's also using like a fleece kind of material. I'm not sure what this material is called. Um, unfortunately, it's not even listed on this, but I like the whole, I like the layout and the colors of this. I really like that there are free downloads of the pattern so I can read it and see the layout of everything. Not sure how well I do with written instructions, as you might have seen from my last video, didn't do too well with that. I'm a visual learner and videos are nice, but I think I could kind of get the hang of it if I looked at this now that I'm more familiar with granny squares. I heard Lion Brand is a really good quality of yarn, so let's check out what crochet kits they have on their site. They seem to have a lot of more like modern style projects, which I really like. 
I really do like the colors of this throw, the chevron or zigzag kit. I've never done anything like this pattern here, but it looks cool and I really like the colors of it. This also has complimentary digital download with the purchase of the yarn. Um, at $55, I'm not sure, kind of pricey for a project. Let's see what kits they have with granny squares. See some bags, uh, ponchos, vests, blankets. I do like the color combo of this one, and ooh, I do like that cardigan. If I do work my way up to a cardigan, I would like it to have a hoodie and pockets, and this seems to have both, and I like that it's integrating the granny square. It's like kind of retro, but modern, and I really like the colors. Also has the size, which is good because I wouldn't know how much yarn to get for the different sizes. It is a little bit pricey. You guys weren't kidding when you said this may be an expensive hobby. Let's see what, maybe a dish towel that could be affordable. And $34 is a little bit much for one dish towel, but it's coming with good cotton yarn. So I'm, I'm guessing that's what I'm paying for. Let's check out some other patterns here. I'm curious what other cardigan type coat patterns they might have. This one also integrates the granny square. That's kind of fun. I do also like this one, Campfire Cardigan, a little less than the other cardigan. I like the colors, it has the pockets, the hoodie. This one looks so cozy, I, I want it now. Well, not now, it's 110 degrees out, but when it gets cooler. It is $71, uh, but it's a bit less than the other one, but man, that looks so cozy, I want to wear that. It doesn't seem too complex because it's only using one yarn, um, not like a bunch of different granny square patterns, but this review also shows how it's made. That looks nice. I think if I were to make this one, I would choose the like navy color, something darker. I am a little bit worried if this would shed, but it does say it doesn't shed. <laughs> I don't know, I'm so new to yarns and different materials. If I were to make one coat or cardigan this year, which one did you like? I think you guys out there are more expert and advanced than I am in crochet, so I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. These are my top three favorite ones that I saw. Let me know what you think. I got these mats like a long time ago. It's They are in a video and I believe it was like uh, exploring stationery at Ikea and while I was there I picked up some of these mats for Kona. That was a few years ago and now they are falling apart because the sun here is just so intense that any outdoor, anything you leave outside here just gets extremely sun damaged and weathered. So the trim has come off the whole mat and the whole like stuffing inside is coming out. Kona uses these like every day. I could stitch the trim along, which would take forever. I do have this fabric fusion glue, which I've been using a lot. It really has lengthened the lifespan of so many things in my home. I've used this on my bedding, um, furniture, anything that has like a little tiny repair. This stuff is so easy to use and it's also non-toxic and machine washable. So I think I can put this all over the trim of these mats and maybe that will fix it.
So I want to make prints of my collages, but I'm learning that when I scan them, the scanner really blows them out. So you can see on the left here, the colors aren't really accurate to the actual art piece. I've learned that a scanner can't really pick up neon colors, so I did use neon paper in that. And not that it looks bad, it's just not accurate to what the actual art piece is. So from now on, I think I'm going to just take raw photos of them with my DSLR, kind of set up like this. It does pick up more of the 3D, elements, which I'm not sure if I like. I kind of like that the scanner pressed it all down. Also, it's so much easier to edit the colors in a raw format when you pull it into Adobe Photoshop. In a few weeks or a couple weeks, hopefully I'll have that and one of these printed in like a postcard size ready to mail to my monthly mail patrons.